The Ukrainian armed forces managed to almost completely neutralize the threat from Russian FPV drones using electronic warfare systems. This fact was sadly acknowledged by Russian propagandist Alexei Chadayev on air at Komsomolskaya Pravda radio station. He argues that the Ukrainian armed forces have an advantage not in the number of FPV strike drones, but in their use. Less than 5% of Russian UAVs reach their target. If we take such a narrow tactical sphere as disposable FPV kamikazes, then they are comparable. Only those that we have are effectively jammed by their electronic warfare. I cited statistics. 160 launched and 5 hits on target, 50 near the target, the rest were shot down by electronic warfare. Chadayev complained. Such vulnerability of Russian FPV drones to electronic warfare systems is the result of the inflexibility of the Russian military-industrial complex. The complex is not able to modernize its weapons quickly enough, adapting to the situation on the battlefield. Recall the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine is often referred to as the world's first large-scale drone war. But far the most prevalent type of drone on the Ukrainian battlefield is the first-person view drone, a type that our company sells in Ukraine and elsewhere. Despite their relatively low cost compared to other aerial platforms, FPV drones possess a number of capabilities that have resulted in a dramatic shift in our understanding of modern warfare. Given their navigation capabilities, these drones have become the preferred platform for mounting explosives and executing targeted strikes. Originally emerging from the realm of civilian hobby drone racing, FPV drones have robust motors and frames that are built to withstand the rigors of high-speed races and multiple crashes. Relative to their fixed-wing cousins, copter-type drones have greater maneuvering capabilities which, in the hands of skilled pilots, convert into precision targeting unique to FPV drones. It is uncommon for pilots to fly their drones through the window of a building or into the open hatch of an armored vehicle unleashing an explosion on exposed personnel inside. FPV drones are also well suited for targeting specific equipment like optics, radars and antennas mounted on the exteriors of armored vehicles. Это буханочка, немножко вот достала ебать, штурмовиками она мне подойдет вообще. Номера не видно нихуя, да? 47, 54. Это 49, 23. И 35, 81. The head of Russia's foreign intelligence agency, Sergei Narishkin, has claimed that the Crimean Bridge remains a high priority for Ukraine in its attacks on the peninsula using Western weapons. Speaking at a meeting of the heads of CIS security agencies in Astana, Kazakhstan, Narishin noted that the bridge which connects the peninsula to the Russian mainland and has repeatedly come under Ukrainian attack is likely to be targeted by British-supplied Storm Shadow missiles. He also pointed out that Ukraine has been using other Western-supplied weapon systems to attack the peninsula such as when Kiev's troops used American-made ATACMS missiles in June, killing four people, including two children, and injuring over 150 at a beach in Sevastopol. Narishkin went on to recall that CIA director William Burns had previously told the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee that Washington's military aid to Ukraine is meant to enable Kiev to inflict tangible damage on Russia, which includes penetrating strikes on Crimea. Burns thus voiced the old Anglo-Saxon maxim to cut off Russia's access to the warm sea at all costs. 
Narishkin said. Earlier this year, Ukraine's Volodymyr Zelensky admitted that Kiev really wants to destroy the bridge, as well as other Russian infrastructure. Since the outbreak of the Ukraine conflict in 2022, the bridge has been targeted with missiles and naval drones on numerous occasions, but most of the attacks were repelled. However, in October 2022, a blast caused by an explosive-laden truck managed to inflict extensive damage to the bridge and took the lives of three people. In July 2023, a drone boat attack also damaged the structure. Ukraine has called for an international tribunal to order Russia to dismantle the Kirsch Bridge or the Crimean Bridge, connecting the temporarily occupied peninsula with mainland Russia as part of its efforts to restore free navigation across the Kirsch Strait. The request was made during oral hearings at the Arbitration Tribunal in The Hague. Occupied Crimea functions as Russia's military base, acting as a springboard for Russia's offensive into Ukraine's southern mainland, consolidating Russian forces and enhancing operational capabilities. Between 2017 and 2020, Russia constructed the Kirsch Road and railway bridges linking its Taman Peninsula to occupied Crimea to secure a vital logistics route to the occupied territory. Oksana Zolotaryova, deputy agent of Ukraine, emphasized in her final speech that dismantling the bridge is the only way to restore passage for ships from all countries that have used the strait in the past and ships that will use the strait in the future. Russia is a signatory to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Zolotaryova stressed that merely telling Russia it is violating international law is insufficient. She urged the tribunal to order Russia to cease its illegal actions, provide guarantees against future violations, and eliminate the consequences of its unlawful activities. This includes returning and revoking registration of illegally seized Ukrainian drilling rigs in the Black Sea.